All right. We are so excited for today's AIM Center webinar, starting with the why and introduction to closed captioning with our special guest, Luis Perez. I'm Mindy Johnson, instructional designer, social media and communication strategist at CAS and for the AIM Center. Also helping us out today are Lynn McCormack, software engineer for CAS and senior technologist for the AIM Center, and our captioning provider, Shanna Baker from ACS Captions. Thank you both so much for being here and for all the work you do. A few logistical notes before we get started. Um, to prevent background noise, we mute your microphones and phone lines. If you have questions or comments, please enter them in the chat pod in the lower left corner of your screen, which we'll be monitoring throughout the webinar. You can also tweet to us during the webinar at the at AIM Center handle or use our hashtag AIM for All hashtag. This webinar is being recorded and live captioned. Both the archive and transcript will be available on the AIM Center's webpage for this event within the coming week. At the conclusion of today's webinar, an evaluation link will be made available. We truly evaluate, value your feedback and use it to continuously improve our webinars and other technical assistance endeavors. So thank you so much for completing that. And now for the fun part. It's my pleasure to introduce our guest presenter, Luis Perez. Luis is an inclusive learning evangelist based in St. Petersburg, Florida, and is under a tornado watch. So if we lose Luis during the <laughs> webinar, um, we will reschedule. As a person with a disability who not long ago completed a doctorate in special education, he knows firsthand the value of accessible education materials. Luis currently serves as the professional learning chair of the ISTE Inclusive Learning Network. He's on the board of the Florida Alliance for Assistive Services and Technology and is a member of the CAST UDL cadre. Luis has spoken at national and international conferences and he has been recognized as an Apple Distinguished Educator and Google in Education Certified Innovator. You can find him on the web at www.luisperezonline.com and on Twitter as IonAccess. Luis, welcome, and we're so excited to be here with you today. Thank you so much for that kind introduction, Mindy, and I'm really happy to be here, even though I'm under a tornado watch. Uh, as long as um, things hold off with, with the weather, I think we're going to have a great webinar. Um, I've been chatting with some of you in the chat area, and we have a great representation from all over the country today, and I'm really excited uh, to be sharing with you some information about captioning. Uh, before we get started, I want to start with a quick video. So let's see if this works. You should be able to hear it, but if you can't, um, we can always, um, there is a handout that we're going to post a link to in the chat area, and in the handout there is a version of this video. So if you're on the phone, you may not be able to hear it, but uh, again, you can go to the handout, which we'll share in just a second. All right, so I'm going to play the video. Uh, just be aware that the first part of it, the first half, uh, does not have any sound. Why are you playing it then? Okay, uh, somebody just asked, why am I playing the video? Uh, I want to ask you a quick question. So what is this video about? Um, I just played a video. It doesn't have any sound. Uh, what is the video about? So go ahead in the chat area. Let me know what, what do you think the video is about? I'm going to give you a second. All right. Somebody is saying the pyramids in Egypt. No clue. You're probably on the phone. Egypt, the pyramids. I'll give you just another second. Okay. So I think we have a consensus. <laughs> That the video is about the pyramids. Okay, now let's see what the video is really about. So I'm gonna play the second half of it. This part does have sound. Hello class, welcome to today's lesson. Today's lesson is gonna focus on shapes. More specifically, we're gonna focus on this shape. <laughs> We need somebody to uh, mute it. All right, so. <laughs> Remember to please mute your phones if you are on the phone line. Thank you. 
All right, so as you can see, uh, most of you guessed incorrectly. You thought the video was about the pyramids because of the visuals that were included in it. And so that, uh, it's actually not a video about the pyramids. It's about, well, it is about the pyramids, but the shape of the pyramid, not necessarily Egypt, uh, which some of you uh, thought it was about. So again, um, this is sort of what a lot of our learners experience when they are deaf or hard of hearing. And we're trying to present information to them in a video, and maybe afterwards we'll have a discussion. But if the person can't uh, grasp the information in the video, if they can't perceive it or hear it, then they're going to be at a loss when it comes to the discussion. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that there's an alternative uh, to the information. And so that's what we're going to focus on today is uh, captions as an alternative for information that we would present in a video. And the reason why this is really important is because uh, the use of video in the classroom is growing exponentially. It is just so easy now to pull in video as a resource for our lessons. And we want to make sure that uh, those videos are accessible. So very uh, quickly here, these are some of the objectives for today's session. Uh, we're going to look at some of the key terms related to captioning so that we're all on the same page. Uh, with regard to the language that we use and when we talk about captioning. We're going to identify some benefits of captioning and that's one of the areas that I'm going to spend quite a bit of time on. And then I'm going to show you how to get started with your own captioning. And because of um, we have limited time today, I'm going to focus primarily on YouTube because that's one of the ways that people are sharing quite a bit of uh, video. I'm also going to show you uh, or discuss some uh, very exciting and brand new software that's available uh, for captioning. Um, if you want to learn more after this webinar, you want to go beyond just captioning for YouTube. You want to caption for other platforms. And then finally, we're going to talk about some best practices, practices for improving the quality of captions. So it's not just enough to have an alternative to the content. We want to make sure that those captions are high quality so that there are no misunderstandings. We're actually providing equivalent information for the people that are watching the video. Uh, in the chat area, you'll find right now a link to the handout. Uh, there is uh, both uh, two links, a much longer one. It is a Google Doc document, and so it should be accessible. It has a table of contents for you to navigate through it. And uh, the URL, I'm going to read it out loud. It's bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, slash, and then Y captioning. And the W and Y and the C in captioning are in uppercase. Uh, with these short URLs from bit.ly, there are... They are uh, case sensitive, so make sure you type that in uh, correctly, or you can just click on the link. All right, so those are some of the objectives, objectives that I have for today's session. I want to know what your objectives are. So go ahead and just type into the chat area what your goals for today's sessions are. We want to make sure that uh, we've um, Anytime we, we do a session like this, that people are setting their own personal goals because it's going to be a lot more meaningful for you that way. And then at the end, I would like you to take a second to reflect and see if we've met those goals. If not, we can follow up with you. You can get in touch with me. All right, how to make my webinars more user friendly. Learning how to close caption videos. Great, perfect. All right, so keep those coming. I'm going to move along just in the interest of time. I'm going to uh, take a peek every once in a while to see what you're entering into the chat area. All right, so let's begin with a uh, quick definition just so we're on the same page and look at what closed captions are. So closed captions, again, as I mentioned at the beginning, are the text alternative for the audio portion of a video program. And they'll usually appear at the bottom of the screen, uh, what we call the lower thirds, um, generally, they are uh, presented as light text on a dark background, but these days in most players you can go in and you can customize the appearance of the captions. Uh, for example, you can see here in this screenshot that I took of a video I captioned, you can see that we have a light blue background and I've changed the opacity. And then I have uh, yellow text with a uh, drop shadow around it. So the drop shadow makes the text stand out a little bit just in case there is also a light background. So 
So it's much easier to read with that drop shadow. So the idea here is if you can't hear the content in the video, then the captions provide a text alternative. Here's an example of what a caption, uh, captions look like. Uh, so captions are added as a second track to the video. And basically what captions are is uh, there are a set of instructions that are sent over to the player. And those instructions tell the player when to start to display a caption and when to end. And then each caption is numbered sequentially and it has the text that's going to be presented. So that's uh, basically if you were to open a captioning file, basic captioning file, this is the set of instructions you would see. All right, uh, so um, I just heard lightning, but we're good so far. <laughs> All right, so some other key terms. Subtitles versus captions. You may hear this uh, used interchangeably, but there is a subtle difference between the two. Uh, subtitles are just the dialogue in a video program, and they're generally used when you're watching a video that's in a different language. So it's essentially a translation so that you can understand the content in your language if the video is from another country or it's in a foreign language. With captions, we uh, have more than just a dialogue. We may have background sounds. So an example would be uh, a movie where there is a uh, police car in the background. Uh, we would caption that. We would include information that there is a siren blaring in the background. And so there is much more than the dialogue, and it creates a really rich experience of uh, what's happening, even if you can't hear it. So once we move beyond that definition of uh, subtitles and captions, we then have um, two different types of captions. We have open captions and closed captions. And open captions are burnt into the video file, and they can't be hidden. So basically, they're shown the entire time that you're watching the video. And some people may not like that because um, you know, they may want to turn off the captions. That's what you can do with closed captions. You can show them or you can hide them as needed. So this is, uh, gives you a lot of flexibility. If you need the captions as a support, then um, you can turn them on. But if you don't, you can turn them off. So, Lots of flexibility with closed captions as opposed to open captions, which are always visible. And then the final term that I want to focus on is closed captions versus subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing. And in functionality, they're the same thing, but there is a highly technical difference, which I'm not going to get into, but I will just make this distinction. It all has to do with our wonderful HDMI cable. So closed captions, uh, because they're a set of instructions, they are not supported by HDMI. And sub, uh, or sorry, closed captions, subtitles for the deaf and hard of hearing are supported over HDMI because they use bitmap images for the text. And so basically, this only really comes into play when you're uh, playing a video from a Blu-ray player uh, or anything that uses that HDMI connection. Uh, at that point, most likely you will be uh, watching subtitles of the deaf and hard of hearing instead of closed captions. All right, so that's all very technical stuff, but we needed to get through it just to make sure that when we're having conversations about captions, we're actually referring to the correct thing. All right, so a quick break here with a trivia question. And this is where you come in. So in the chat area, I want you to let me know, what do you think was the first captioned television program? I'll give you a second. I love Lucy. I love Lucy. Sesame Street. The News. I'll give you 30 more seconds. Brady Bunch. Disney? Somebody asked with a question mark. The French Chef Program. All right. So a couple of you apparently have been to webinars or sessions on captioning because you actually got this right. It was the French Chef in 1972. That was ah, somebody looked it up. No cheating. <laughs> now uh, at this point, um, I want to tell you that um, I'm a big fan of PBS, and one of the reasons why I first got interested in captioning. Um, even though I have a disability, 
Um, I'm actually visually impaired, so captions really would not be that helpful to me at the current time. But I got interested in captioning not only because I'm an accessibility uh, professional, but also because I'm an English language learner. And so when I came uh, to the United States as a child, uh, one of the things that I did, um, I came in the middle of the summer and I didn't speak a word of English and I had to know some of the language by that fall because I was going into school. And one of the things that I love about PBS programming is their support for captioning. And you can turn on those captions um, and it just gives you a little bit more exposure to the uh, text, to the print. And so I love captions from that perspective of being an English language learner. Now, um, even though the French Chef was the first caption program, here is that, that trivia question was kind of a trick question. Um, those captions were open captions. So as a sort of review in the chat area, let me know what are open captions. Just a second ago, I gave you a definition. That is right. That's right, Joe, Judy and Parth. Excellent. All right. So they can't be hidden. They're burnt into the video file. It wasn't actually into 1980 that we were able to actually provide closed captions. And that was made possible by this device that you see on the screen. It's the Telecaption 4000. Doesn't that sound like it's going to take us to space or something? The Telecaption 4000 was a closed caption decoder. It means that it was a uh, separate device that you could connect to your TV and then it would, would decode the instructions for the captions so they could be shown on your TV. And just to follow along with that trivia question, on March 16, 1980, we got the uh, first actually closed caption TV programs. Uh, somebody said Disney in the uh, chat area. They were actually kind of right. <laughs> Son of Flubber, which was a Disney movie. Um, I believe it was the Sunday night movie, uh, or it was on the wonderful world of Disney that evening. And then um, that same evening, there was a showing of the Burt Reynolds comedy, Semi-Tough. It's a movie about football, professional football. And then Masterpiece Theater as well. So uh, two out of those three are not all that memorable, uh, not all that highbrow, but at least we had Masterpiece Theater. So again, just a little bit of trivia for you so that you know a little bit about the history of captioning and uh, understand that it's, it's fairly recent that uh, this has come about, even though TV has been around for a few decades. All right, so now that we've gone over some of the key terms, looked a little bit at the history of captioning, let's talk about the why, because that's really what we're here for today. So obviously the first benefit we can think of is that it benefits deaf and uh, hard of hearing people, right? Uh, this is just one statistic. There are many of them out there. But this is one that I found from the National Health, Health Interview Survey in 2012. And for uh, adults age 18 or older, um, currently about 15% of the population has some sort of hearing difficulty. Uh, and that's about 37.5 million people. Now, I looked up around the world, it's around 360 million people which is about the population of the United States. <laughs> so let that sink in. <laughs> so there are quite a few people out there that have some type of hearing difficulty that makes it difficult for them to understand the information when they're watching a video if they don't get this captioning support. And when we look at those statistics, age is the greatest predictor of uh, you know, when your hearing is going to start to diminish and you're going to need some other support in order to understand what you're listening to. And in most of the statistics that I found, about half of the people that report having some hearing difficulty, they're over 60. So uh, in terms of captioning, if you're not going to do it for the children, <laughs> at least do it for yourself because all of us at some point in our lives most likely will wear a hearing aid or have uh, some kind of hearing loss. Now, I am not going to mention the law. There is a legal requirement as well for captioning. 
and we could do a separate workshop or a separate webinar on that. But the reason why I'm not going to focus on the law is because what I've found is when we focus on that, generally um, people do the minimum, right, to meet the letter of the law. And so what I want to focus on today is the spirit of captioning and the many other benefits that come with captioning that have nothing to do with meeting the, the law. Although that is an important requirement. Um, you can just ask Harvard, MIT, and edX, which are uh, just three different lawsuits uh, related to captioning that are out there. But other than that quick mention, I really want to focus on the positive benefits of captioning. So um, this is a great review of the literature on captioning by Morton Ann Gernsbacher from 2015. And there is a link, a uh, short URL, as well as a QR code. And the link is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y, slash, and then CC benefits for all. And that's the number all. The CC is capitalized. The B in benefits and the A in all are capitalized. Remember the short URL. Uh, are case sensitive, so you have to type it in correctly. And of course, if you have a QR code reader app on your device, you can just scan that code and that will open up that uh, article, which does a great job of um, kind of compiling different links to resources and different studies that have looked at the benefits of captioning. And I'm going to summarize some of the key findings. Uh, you're welcome, Christine. I'm glad you like those notes. And again, the notes in the handout have links to all of the videos that I'm going to show, some additional videos that I won't have time for, but also links to all of the resources, um, all of the software and so on. All right, so hopefully you've gotten uh, that link. We'll move along here. And let's take a look at just three areas where captioning can be a big benefit. Uh, the first one that should be of interest to all of us is uh, it benefits children who are learning how to read and on the screen are listed a number of different reading skills everything ranging from uh, word knowledge to decoding to vocabulary acquisition to oral reading rates and there are a number of studies listed so again these are from uh, that review uh, that I give you the link to and beyond these academic skills it's also an effective component in that if you're a struggling reader uh, one of the things that we can do is we can find a video that is highly engaging maybe a video related to something that you're interested in and that could be a way that we provide you with even more exposure to print uh, and in a way that is not as threatening to you we can use the fact that the video is engaging to give you some practice in some of these skills uh, things like word recognition and uh, so on so with all of these um, elements of captioning or all these benefits there's always an effective component as well it closed captions, and this is one that, uh, again, I was very interested in as an English language learner myself, is that it does have benefits for learning a second language. And uh, a number of studies have found that when students watch videos in a second language, they have improvement in a number of academic areas, ranging from uh, reading and listening comprehension to word recognition to decoding skills, and once again, motivation. So one of the things that captioning can do is can decrease the anxiety that you feel uh, from feeling that you don't know enough of the new language. Uh, and so we can use video as a way to uh, expose our learners who are English language learners to that uh, target language um, in a way that is not as threatening to them. And the final uh, benefit here that I want to mention is for adults learning how to read. And this is especially uh, important in the developing world where literacy rates um, tend to be a lot lower. And so um, I want to highlight one study by Kothari and I'm not going to try to mention the second name because I'm probably going to butcher it and I'm used to people butchering my own name so I don't want to do that. But this is a study um, in India where what they did was great. They um, noticed that Bollywood movies were really popular. And most people, even if they couldn't read, they would sit around the TV, sometimes as a family, and watch these Bollywood movies, even in some of the poorest areas. So what they did is they um, added captions to these Bollywood movies in Hindi. And 
they went back and noticed that there was dramatic increase in the literacy rates in those areas where they um, you know provided the uh, videos with captioning so I think that's a fascinating idea and I would love to see more of that implemented uh, so again the number of benefits um, to summarize for captioning uh, that range from uh, young children learning how to read to adults learning how to read and as well as those who are learning a second language or who are English language learners. Beyond that, um, there are a number of, cap of benefits to captioning that have to do with the environment. You know, sometimes we may be accessing a video in a noisy environment or in a place where the sound can be turned on. That could be an airport. Uh, that could be the gym. That's where I use captioning quite a bit because the TVs are way on the other side of the room and so um, I can't hear it, but I can follow along with the captions when they have the news on and so on. Or it could be a restaurant uh, where it's very loud, but you know, if you have the captions, you can still follow along. Uh, they can also be helpful when speakers have a strong accent, you know, like say me. <laughs> Hopefully you're not struggling with my accent. It's a mix of uh, New York and Dominican Republic. And depending on how tired I am, you get a different version of it. But again, um, you know, if the speaker has a strong accent, we can at least see the words on the screen and make sure that we're getting the right content. Or it could be speakers in another sense. It could be your audio system doesn't work. And that has happened to me a number of times where I've gone to do a presentation, the audio is not working well, and instead of us losing time, I could just continue uh, playing that video. We don't lose any time because people can follow along with the captions. Uh, so it could be that the speakers don't work. It could also be that the sound quality is poor. We may have an old video. Uh, this is the case for a lot of historical films where the audio is not, may have a lot of cracks, uh, may have different volume levels and so on. And so having the captions as another option is great. All right, so I'm going to turn it back to you. Let's see, what are some other um, situations where you think captions would be helpful? Uh, so I'll give you uh, about 30 seconds or so, about a minute. Go ahead and type that into the chat area, and I'm going to um, get a drink of water so that my accent doesn't come out as much. Melinda, that's a great... Melinda, sorry. See, I'm talking about butchering names, and now I'm mispronouncing them. Melinda, that's a great point. Uh, the people sometimes don't pay attention, so we may be multitasking. Uh, there are many times when I have the TV in the background and I might be doing the dishes or I may be um, ironing, which is an adventure for me because I'm visually impaired, so I try to iron without burning down the place. But I may be doing something else, and so um, with the captions, if I miss something, I can sort of rewind if, it, if that's possible and then go back and you know catch what I miss. In hospital rooms with roommates, Perfect. Great. By the way, some of the biggest users of closed captions are significant others. <laughs> they may want to go to sleep at a different time and still sort of watch the news or watch a sporting event. So as long as, you know, it's not the Mets or the Giants, which are my teams, and they score a touchdown or score a run and I jump up and scream, it should be okay. I shouldn't wake up my significant other. Quite a few coming through. There we go. All right, there is a question there about visual learners. Yes, it could be beneficial. Basically, we're getting multimodal information, right? So you can see it and you can listen to it and that can be a reinforcement. When characters mumble in Grey's Anatomy, and by the way, I, I read somewhere, somebody said that with reality TV, captions are a must. And the reason for that is, um, you know, these are not professional actors, so they don't always enunciate well. And then there's also sometimes a lot of uh, crosstalk. So it's great when they um, have the captions for those uh, reality TV shows. Videos with complex vocabulary, absolutely. So if you have a field like law or science, where it may help if you uh, listen to the content as well as see it, see how it's spelled and see what it looks like. That um, is a great suggestion there. Excellent. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for those contributions. So again, beyond just the law, we have all these benefits uh, for captioning. That's really what I want us to focus on, the positive side of it.
final one that I want to highlight, um, this may not apply to all of you, but those of you that are content creators um, and you want to put out your content out there and you want people to be able to find it, um, you know, when we talk about uh, search engines, um, Google is a deafblind user with millions of friends and dollars to spend. And I love that quote by Wendy Chisholm, who's an accessibility advocate. So basically, you know, Google can't watch the videos. Google can't follow your images. It can't listen to your podcast. But what Google can do is process text. And so that's what we want to give um, or put out there for Google is text. And so that's where the captionings come in. Um, I read somewhere, I'm not sure if this is true, but if you've ever watched The Daily Show or any show where they do montages of uh, different videos, um, the way that they can find the different clips that they're gonna use is by doing a search through the captions. So again, if you're a content creator, maybe you provide e-learning, anything you wanna put out there that you want people to be able to find, um, closed captioning can help with that. Here's an example of that. Uh, Discovery Digital Networks found out that with YouTube videos that have captions, there's 13% more views in the first two weeks and 7% more lifetime views. And I am myself a YouTube uh, creator. I put a link to my YouTube channel in the handout. And so again, uh, I want people to be able to find my tutorials. I, I create a lot of video tutorials and I want them to be able to benefit from it. So when I put them out there with captioning, um, I'm just getting that uh, closer to being a reality. The people finding just what they need while they're looking for stuff on the web. All right, so another trivia question, another pause here. Here is the question. A 2006 UK study looked at the percentage of viewers who use closed captions. What is your guess as to what percentage were deaf or hard of hearing of those people? So go ahead in the chat area and just kind of give us an approximation of what percentage were deaf or hard of hearing. All right, we're getting uh, numbers all over the place. Five, 10%, 40%, 35, Beatrice, Beatrice says. I'll give you just one more second. All right, let me go ahead and reveal. And by the way, if you're looking in the handout, I left that part out. I didn't want you to cheat, but I will put it back in the handout after our session today. All right, so there, here is the answer. Uh, those of you that said 15, 20%, you were correct. Um, again, this is in the UK. They did the study in order to find out how often captions were being used and what resources they needed to dedicate to them. And so as you can see, most of the people that used them were not deaf or hard of hearing. Um, maybe they were using captions for all of the other reasons that we indicated earlier. All right, so how do I get started? You've bought into captions. You think this is great. It has a lot of benefit. Uh, how do I get started? Well, the first thing is just say no to automatic captions. And to illustrate that, um, you know, we're just not there yet with automatic captions. Their quality is just not good enough. Uh, I'm going to bring up a video. It's a very quick video. I'm going to go ahead and play that. And again, if you can't hear it, uh, there is a version of it linked uh, in the handout. So here we go. Now, for this one, it, there is audio, but just uh, take a look at the captions. Mmm, they smell so good. They are the most beautiful part of the plant. Yeah, they look so lovely. I love flowers. Let's make a flower by magic. You can do anything. Not everything, but I can make a flower. Let's start. Yeah, let me first bring some sepals. You know, these sepals protect the bud till it opens. Sepal protects bud. All right, so that was just a quick illustration of, um, and that's, um, you know, with that video, we actually have some visuals that are uh, helpful. And, but imagine if the video were just a lecture where the professor were speaking and those captions were uh, not accurate. Then a uh, student, again, would be at a loss when they had to participate in a discussion or they had to take a quiz related to the video. Uh, so in that video, we talked about, um, I think there was something about the smell of glory I have no idea what that refers to. And then at the end of the video, it talked about the staples and the book. 
which are completely unrelated to the content because it's actually about the parts of a flowers. Uh, and so again, we want to make sure that those captions are not only present, but also that they're accurate. And uh, in the case of auto captions, um, there is a different term for them, but I won't mention it because this is a family friendly show. Um, we want to make sure that we can fix them. So what can we do if we're not following along with the um, automatic captions? Uh, here's a few things you can do in order to do this right. So I'm going to give you three options. Um, and I've included a link in the handout that points to the YouTube uh, resources. I'm going to focus on YouTube because that's where a lot of videos are being shared. But these concepts apply to other services as well. So the first is uh, you can edit the automatic captions. And uh, you can do that on YouTube. So let me show you through a series of screenshots how you do that. Um, and again, um, I would do this live as a live demo, but um, we may not have the bandwidth to do that. But these screenshots will serve the same purpose. So the first thing is uh, when you log in to your YouTube account, um, in the upper right hand corner, you're going to see uh, most likely your photo, the photo that you've used for your Google profile. And when you click on that photo, you'll see information about your account and you'll look for something called the Creator Studio. That's what allows you to manage all of your videos, right? So you'll click on Creator Studio. You'll find the video uh, that you want to fix the captions for. And then um, you will, there's a pull down menu next to it. And you'll click on that pull down menu for edit. And you'll look for the subtitles and CC or subtitles and closed captioning option. Um, it takes a little bit of time once you've uploaded a video for it to be processed. But once it's processed, you should see the automatic captions uh, show up. And so the next thing we'll do is once we go in and select uh, subtitles and closed captioning, we're going to click where it says English or whatever language you're captioning in. Um, and you'll know that it's the automatic captions because it's going to say that right next to the name in, of the language in parentheses. And of course, you will click on edit. And now you're going to see each caption in its own text field. And I want you to notice here at the bottom, there's a proper name. Um, the name is uh, Rihanna Gutierrez, who's a friend of mine and also uh, somebody that I work with. And that is not even close. And you'll notice with the automatic captions, that's where they really fall down. It's any proper names, any complex vocabulary. So what we're going to do is basically just double click inside any of these text fields and then just fix it. So we can fix any typos. We can fix any proper names that it hasn't gotten right. So now you can see here I have the proper name Rhiannon Gutierrez. And so now we're ready to go. So the next I um, once you fix all of those, you can also adjust the timings. So you can play and pause the video and then you can drag each of these um, in between the different captions and move them around and trim them until uh, the timing is just right. And then the last thing is to just publish your edits. And so this will save um, those changes that you've made to the captions. And now you'll see that we have the automatic ones. And then right underneath that, we have the new captions. So that's it. We're done. We fixed those automatic captions so that they're more accurate and the timing is better. Now, um, this last step is optional, but I like to do it anyway. I will actually go into the automatic ones and I will unpublish those. And the reason I do that is I don't want people to get confused when they click that CC button or that closed caption button. Uh, because if I don't unpublish those automatic ones, they'll show up in that menu and people may choose them by mistake and then see the, the wrong text displayed for the captions. So generally, I will, once I've created uh, an edited version of my captions, I'll go in and I'll unpublish the automatic ones. So that's probably the easiest thing to do is to fix your captions. The other thing you can do is you can upload a transcript. And then you can have YouTube figure out the timings. And it does a really good job with this. Um, so this is um, fairly accurate, very accurate, I would say. And you just need to create a text file of your transcript once you've listened to the video. And uh, so the steps for that are very simple. 
you'll go, uh, we'll follow basically the same path. We'll go into the um, uh, Creator Studio. We'll select the video we want to work on, and then we'll choose Upload a File for the option. And then we'll choose Transcript. And then that's it. It will upload that transcript, and it will take a little bit of time because Google has to go through and apply some magic to make sure that the timing is right with the text you've uploaded. You can also transcribe right inside of Google. So if you choose that option, you can just paste the text from your transcript in inside of Google, uh, YouTube, sorry, I should say. And then again, you can tell YouTube, go ahead and set the timings. So either way will work. You can upload a transcript file or you can copy and paste into this uh, transcription window and then just choose set timing. And after a few minutes, depending, it all depends on the length of your video, right? So if you have a longer video, it's going to take longer. After a few minutes, voila, you should see your captions with uh, the timing set just right. So now here's what I recommend. This is, my, this is not Fight Club, but it is my first rule of captioning, not the first rule of Fight Club. Um, the first rule is um, I do a lot of video, right? I work with uh, students, I work with faculty creating videos, and what I tell them is always start with a transcript. Um, you can, uh, if you start with a transcript, you're going to have a number of benefits. Uh, first, your video is going to be just look more professional because there won't be as many ums and ahs as you try to figure out what you're going to say. Um, it also allows you to organize your thoughts a little bit better. So the finished video is just going to be more concise and just more focused. And then um, the biggest benefit is if you start with that transcript, you've already done the captions in a way. So then it's just a matter of uploading it uh, to YouTube or going in and copying and pasting it into that uh, transcript area and then letting YouTube set the timing. So um, again, different options, but the idea is if you start with a transcript from the start, you will not only get a better video, but you'll have done you know, most of the work up front. Um, and then here's the final option, and this is the one that's a little bit more difficult, which is to create a caption file from scratch and using some captioning software. And um, I have some good news there. Um, these are the formats, just in case you're curious, for YouTube and for Vimeo, which is the other popular um, service. Uh, SRT and SVV for YouTube. And then SRT and a number of other formats for Vimeo. I'm going to focus on SRT because um, that's what's used also on Facebook. So I didn't put Facebook on the screen because, um, you know, we're focused on work here, right? Not uh, cat videos and the like. But um, these are the formats. So as long as you have the file in the right format and it has the you know, right information in it, it will work. So let me um, just share a few of the things that I use, a few of the tools that I use for captioning. The first one is Movie Captioner. Uh, this is a tool that's available uh, for purchase. It works on the Mac, it works on Windows, so this is actual uh, software, it's not an app, it's software that runs on your computer. Um, and it's um, $99 the last time I checked, but you can get a half price uh, version. Uh, it's fully functional uh, for $49 as an educator, that's an educator license. Uh, you can also try it for 14 days, and that trial is again fully functional, so you can see if it works for you. Here's the website. If you want to um, download a trial of Movie Captioner, it's Syncromedia.com. There is also a uh, white paper uh, document that they have available on their website that is great if you want to learn more about the technical aspects of captioning. Uh, for instance, the files and how they work and so on. Uh, that's there for you if you're an overachiever and want to really get into the nitty gritty of how captions are put together. So here's my uh, basic workflow. Um, I will open up Movie Captioner. Um, I will import a movie. So there is a Load Movie button. I'll click on that button. I will do the captions in Movie Captioner, and I'll show you in a second what that looks like. And then I'll export it in the appropriate format. And just to make sure that you're paying attention, what would be one of the formats for YouTube? 
So what's the three letter extension for YouTube videos? All right, there we go. SRT, you know me. If you uh, use SRT, it's going to work in most of the online services. So that's a good format. Um, the other one is WebVTT, which is uh, becoming quickly becoming a standard. And so if you're uploading your video to uh, any of those hosting services, um, or you're using an HTML5 uh, player, then WebVTT is the format. And I'll show you that in just a second where you create those. So the final option, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is I take that captioning file and then I upload it to YouTube. And instead of choosing the transcript option, I'll choose the subtitle file option because that, that file already has the timings. So there's not much for YouTube to do other than just make it available along with the video. So here's what movie captioning looks like. Um, you can see there's a player at the top. Um, this screenshot just shows the, uh, the player controls. Um, I can choose a repeat interval. So I can choose four or five seconds. And basically what the software will do is we'll keep repeating a loop of video for uh, you know as many times as it takes for me to get that captioned correctly. So I'll click start. I'll start listening to the first captioning. I'll type it in just like I did here and then I can just press return and that will accept that first caption and then we'll move to the next one and so I will um, you know stretch first you want to make sure you're well stretched and loose before you do this and then what I also recommend is not doing it you know an hour video all at once but breaking it up because um, I find that you start typing um, your worse, your typing gets worse if you spend too much time doing this. So I'll break it up. I'll do about 10 minutes, then take a break, and so on. And I can start and stop in this software as needed. And again, after each caption, I'll press return or enter, and my captions will be listed on the right side with their timings. Now, if the timings are, um, if I need to fix them, there is an option within the software where you can go back and do that. Uh, and there's information on how to do that within the uh, help guide for uh, Movie Captioner. The last step, of course, is to export the captions. And one of the things I love about Movie Captioner, besides the, the fact that it works on both Windows and the Mac, is that look at all the formats that we can export to. <laughs> So if there is a captioning format, it's included here. Uh, I've highlighted YouTube because that's mostly what I do. Uh, but you can see um, there's SEC. If you're uploading to iTunes U, that would be your format. Um, if you have QuickTime Player Pro, not the current version of QuickTime Player, but the old Pro version, you can actually do the whole workflow. You can combine the captions with the video and end up with a... Uh, caption video at the end. If not, you'll have to use something like Compressor to do that final step where you combine the SEC file with your video. And then all the way at the bottom, you'll see HTML5 Web VTT. So Web VTT is um, the option that allows you to use it with an HTML5 player. So basically, if you know the format that you, your captions need to be in for the service you're using, then you can come in here and you can choose that format for the export option. So that's movie capture, and that's what I've been using for a while, but I'm so excited to share with you what I think are two game changers today. So here is the first game changer when it comes to captions. It's a free app that Apple released uh, not too long ago, and it's called Clips, C-L-I-P-S. And one of the things that's uh, really cool about Clips is that it uses voice recognition to uh, actually transcribe what you're saying in your videos and show it on the screen as closed captions. Uh, and that is a free app. And what's nice is um, as you listen to the video, you can go in and you can double click the text. And if there are any mistakes, you can fix it and fix the, you know, sometimes it gets the proper names incorrectly or it doesn't get the punctuation you can add that in you can fix any typos and then you can export that video uh, into YouTube uh, into Facebook and other sites like Instagram um, and then those captions will travel along with your video
And here is the other game changer, and I'm so excited about this because uh, there's a typo in my slide. Uh, this is the Caption and Description Editor, or CADET, uh, from WGBH and the National Center for Accessible Media. And with uh, CADET, you'll be able to do really increase the amount of captioning you can do because it's cross-platform. And the typo there is that it's not coming soon. It's not coming on June 1st. It's here already. It was made available yesterday, as Justine just pointed out. So we can use it. So here are some of the things about Cadet. Uh, it's an HTML5 web app. So basically, it just loads into your web browser. Uh, and that means you can use it on Windows, on the Mac. Um, so there's lots of different places you can use it. Uh, it uses uh, video formats that will play natively on the web. So things like MP4, which is an industry standard, you'll be able to bring into Cadet and caption it with no problems. Um, and then you can see some of the formats that are going to be supported. Uh, WebVTT, which I said is becoming a standard for HTML5 video. SRT, which we're going to use on YouTube and a number of these other sites and, and more. And you can have a number of options um, for how you work with the captions. You can transcribe directly in the application. And remember, again, it's a web app. So you're actually working inside of a web browser. You can import a transcript and then just set the timings. Or you can import a caption file in any of these formats that I'm showing here. And you may want to do that if you have a captioning file already, but maybe you just need to fix it. So maybe you created a captioning file with older software or different software, and you just need to make a quick fix. Um, so you can bring it into Cadet and, and fix that. So I'm really excited about this um, because it's free. It's uh, you know funded. Um, I think they had a uh, crowdsourcing or crowdfunding campaign for a while, but it's also funded with some uh, grants. Uh, and so this is a... Uh, new tool that's available to the entire community. And uh, I think it's going to make a big difference in terms of making captioning itself more accessible uh, to more people. More of us can do it now. All right, so the last thing I want to do, and then I'm going to open it up for uh, some questions, is talk about what makes for um, quality captions. Because it's not enough to just have the text representation. We want to make sure that it's of high quality. Um, and so I want to point you to a resource. It's called a captioning key. Uh, you'll find it at captioningkey.org. And um, they have a lot of information there. But what I wanted to do is um, just kind of uh, summarize some, some of that into a simple acronym that you can all remember very easily. So it's ACCESS, <laughs> which is very appropriate because that's what we're trying to do with captions is to make information more accessible. So access, I'll go through the, uh, the different parts of it very quickly. Uh, obviously, we want the captions to be accurate, right? We want them to be equivalent to what is being said in the, uh, in the video. So that's important. Consistent. So, you know, there is different ways to identify the speakers, which is another thing you do with captions. You need to let people know when the speaker changes or the person speaking changes. And so, if we do that one way at the beginning of the video, we want to make sure that we do it in the middle of the video and at the end of the video because it can be quite distracting to have those changes in conventions, you know, halfway through a video. So we want to make sure we're consistent. Clear um, and speaker identification is a big part of this concept of making sure that the captions are clear. Um, there should be no guess as to who's speaking and when. So we want to make sure all the speakers in the video are labeled correctly. Equal, so basically you're not paraphrasing what's being said in the video. You're trying to be as accurate uh, as possible. You're also not censoring what's being said in the video. So uh, your job, again, is to provide equivalency, not to uh, be an editor here. Um, and then synchronize. Uh, if we have a long delay between when something is said and when the captions show up, um, that can be really distracting, but also it can lead to loss of information. You know, you may not um, capture everything that's being said in the video. 
And then scene and legible. Um, this is not as important these days because uh, we can actually, in the players, we can uh, adjust the size of the text. We can adjust the background. You can do that on iOS and the Mac. And in the most devices, you have an option uh, to do that. But um, it's still important. Uh, one thing that remains important is that you don't block important things in the video. And whenever I'm doing a video, I'm mindful that I don't put things in the lower third. Uh, especially if it's something that's really important uh, for the the content that's represented in the video. I try to make sure to think ahead of where the captionings are going to be to ensure that that important content is not blocked by them. So those, that's just kind of a, a quick acronym that you can use to uh, help you remember you know, some of the elements of quality captions. So again, access, accurate, consistent, clear, equal, synchronized, seen and legible. And if you want more information, you can always go to the captioning key at captioningkey.org. Final tip, as a bonus tip, if you have an Apple TV, just remember that if you miss something, you can hold down the microphone button on your Apple TV and say, what did she say? Or what did he say? And it will automatically rewind 15 seconds and turn on the captions for you. So isn't that cool? That's a bonus tip for you. So if you have an Apple TV, again, just on the Apple TV, you can say, what did he say? What did she say? And you can catch that content that maybe you missed because you were busy doing something else. All right, so last thought before we take some questions. I want you to remember this. Captioning is both an art and a science. This is um, basically holds true for a lot of accessibility. Um, you know, there are guidelines. Actually, this is true for UDL as well, right? There are guidelines. There are checkpoints. But those things are there just as a starting point. A lot of it we learn through practice and we learn through implementation. And so with captioning, there is the science of it. You know, what makes a captioning file? How do we put it together? The fact that we can go on YouTube and we can fix them and so on. But there's also an art which has to do with the quality of the captions. And that will come to you with time. Uh, for example, I'm not a musician. So when I started doing captions that had music in them, it took me a while to get that right, you know, how I wanted to represent that. So there are many different types of situations um, that you're going to be captioning, different types of videos. And it's really just through practice that you're going to get better at this. So um, basically my final thought is um, you don't have to be perfect right away. Uh, what we're going for is better, right? So let's try to get better with the captions, improve their quality, but that will happen over time. It's not something that happens overnight. So with that, I want to thank you all. I want to uh, thank our uh, CART provider today uh, for all her help. Uh, I want to thank you all for joining us today and um, everyone at uh, the AIM Center for giving me this opportunity to talk to you about captions. There is my contact information. Um, again, you can find my video tutorials and other videos that I've posted on YouTube at youtube.com uh, slash LFPerez72. Um, I have a website, LuisPerezOnline.com. And then you can also uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm a Twitterholic at IonAccess. That's E-Y-E-O-N-A-X, like xylophone, S like Sam, in case my accent gets in the way. All right, so let's see, what questions do you have for me? And yes, thank you, Shana, for uh, providing the cart uh, today. I'm going to try to read some of your um, questions that you have here. So give me a second while I catch up. Somebody asked, Marie asked about captioning for a webinar. Well, you're seeing it in action here. Um, we have real-time transcription. And so uh, we have somebody helping us today, Shana. And so that's one way that you can do it for a live webinar. Um, now, I am a volunteer with the ISTE Inclusive Learning Network. We don't have the funding to do the real-time captioning. But what we do is we always create a recording. And then um, as, you know, sometimes have some constraints, but we'll try to at least caption the uh, recording. 
and make that available with the captions. And anybody can chime in too. I'm not uh, the only expert here. That I, I noticed that there are quite a few of you that have a, um, a lot of expertise to offer in this area. So uh, this is Mindy. Luis, thank you so much for this awesome webinar. I just wanted to address uh, Nancy's question about um, having a big backlog of webinars that are an hour and an hour and a half long um, that may not be captioned yet. Um, we at, at CAST, we actually um, contract out a lot of our captioning if it's a larger webinar. Um, we, right. There, there's a bunch of different companies that do uh, transcription and caption creation. Um, one of those is 3Play Media. Another one is called Caption Sync. Um, and you can contact those people and they can, they, they're actually very, very reasonable. And, have, and 3Play Media, for example, has a ton of different um, uh, like output uh, formats. I formats. Lost my word right now. What's that? Formats. They they can output the different formats. Yeah. Let me let me let me throw in some information on that. Um, yeah. There's another company called Rev R E V. So there's three or four um, big uh, captioning providers. Um, the reason to go with them, again, if you have a lot of webinars, so there's a lot of volume you have to get through and the videos are really long, that's probably your best bet is to just hire somebody. They have a lot of people that they can assign uh, the captioning to. They also use some, um, you know, really complex tools to do that. Some of it is speech recognition, but then they have quality assurance that goes through to make sure that it's accurate. Um, and they have really fast turnaround. Um, I actually use, um, you know, some people that I know use services like that for research. They do focus groups and things like that. And so you need quick turnaround so it doesn't hold up your research. And so it's the same concept. Um, what I'm focusing on today is it's not always going to be an hour long webinar, but there may be a video you want to use in the classroom. And you just need to do a quick captioning job. Well, you know, something like uploading it to YouTube will be sufficient for that, uh, for doing just that quick captioning, sort of ad hoc uh, kind of captioning. But yes, if you have a large volume of captioning jobs, then definitely look into a service like 3Play Media. And they have lots of resources, too, if you want to learn more about captioning. So definitely recommend going to 3Play Media. That's number three, playmedia.com. Let's see, I'm going to try to scroll through here. I have a difficult time seeing the um, chat area. <laughs> so uh, let me see if I can find some of these questions. Or Mindy, did you notice any that popped out? Um, I think that was, so I think you answered all of them that were right at the end. Um, We've got the survey link right in the chat area. It will also pop up when we end this webinar. Um, so please uh, give us your feedback on this webinar. And um, Luis, it's, it's just been such a pleasure having you here. And um, your expertise is invaluable to us. <laughs> so well, thank you so much. My pleasure. And if there are any questions that are still outstanding, again, my contact information is on the screen. So um, go ahead and uh, just get in touch with me, and I'll, if I don't know the answer, I most likely know somebody who does, because <laughs> that's uh, what's important is building those networks. And so by attending this webinar, um, you've already kind of become part of that network. So thank you so much, everybody, and I hope to see you on another webinar. Thank you so much. So he, our next webinar is on Tuesday, or sorry, Wednesday, June 14th. It's learning through audio supported reading, myth or reality. That should be really interesting. So stay tuned to our website for more information on that. Um, and thank you again, Shanna, our cart recorder, and um, Luis Perez, our presenter, and Lynn McCormack for monitoring the chat, um, and all of you for being here, and all of you that are listening on the recording afterwards. Thanks so much.